Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for story time with the authors of Citizen Baby. I am Ann Corpus. I am the annual giving manager at Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina, and I will be fielding your questions behind the scenes and helping with any technical support you may need. Um, I do want to let you know that we're encouraging questions and comments for Dan and Megan, and feel free to use the chat button at the bottom as we will have a Q&A session in between each reading. Um, this session will also be recorded and available in our library of events at the end of the week. So without further ado, I'm with Claire Vizi, who is the Director of Development at PCANC, and she's gonna kick things off and introduce our guests, Claire. Thanks, Ann. We're just managing a little technical issues, but thank you, um, and my name is Claire Beasy. I'm the Development Director at Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina, and we are so thrilled um, to be joined by Megan Bryant and Daniel Prosterman to help us kick off our Five Factors Virtual 5K Race Week. This is the first day of our week-long event that ends on Halloween, um, raising awareness about the five factors um, to prevent, prevent child abuse and neglect. So um, Daniel and Megan are co-authors of the children's book series uh, entitled Citizen Baby. And they're gonna answer a few questions for us tonight as well as do a reading. Um, we are recording this. Um, so folks will have access to the recording throughout the week, but you guys have the privilege of being able to engage in question and answer with the author um, as well during this live event. So thank you for being here. Um, Megan and Dan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, for writing um, these books and helping families engage with their children long before they're able to vote about that civic duty and the importance of that. I'd love to hear from you a little bit about the background and how you came to write this book series together. Um, and then maybe we'll dive in to read a couple of the books. Thank you so much, Claire, um, and thank you, Anne. We are just delighted to be here tonight to share um, our Citizen Baby books. Um, and so here are a couple of them. Um, so the idea for these books came to me after a few months after our third child was born. Um, since our first child was born 13 years ago, we have involved our kids in voting in every election, every primary, every local special election, whatever it was, our kids have been part of it. So our third child was born in 2018 and I was thinking about how excited I was to take him to vote in the um, special election in North Carolina. And all of a sudden the idea for the series just hit me, a whole series that would explain these concepts to kids um, and in a just a kid-friendly, accessible way and also to help parents start having these conversations earlier. And I knew um, I knew right away that I wanted to write them with Dan because uh, of his unique background. He's, um, an, he's an historian and an expert in American history. And so I thought as a professional children's book author and a professional historian, we would be able to um, wrestle with some pretty complex topics, but be able to present them in a way that was really fun and kid friendly. So um, we started immediately writing the first one. And um, usually the publishing industry is very slow and steady, but as soon as these books went on submission, we had an offer in a matter of days because I think they are also very timely. As a nation, we are realizing just how important it is to understand our civic responsibility and that you know democracy works best when everyone takes part. So uh, the idea was really inspired by our youngest child, but also by our life as a family together and how we have incorporated our kids in our, um, in our civic engagement ever since they were uh, babies. Wonderful. Dan, any, anything to add about why the importance of, of talking to kids from an early age about this? Oh, certainly. I'm uh, as as Megan mentioned. I'm a I'm a hi historian. I'm a history history professor at uh, Salem College, 
And uh, for, for decades now, I've been working with students in the classroom, from usually in the high school to college level, uh, thinking about issues related to electoral systems, voting rights, democracy, and the like. And I've written for academic audiences about democracy, but I've always found it a, a fascinating challenge in the classroom to try to take some of the most esoteric difficult, complex topics related to, say, the Constitution, related to how our democracy works, and try to break those down in a way uh, so that uh, really any audience is able to, to pick out exactly what's going on, and then, more importantly, how they're able to participate. And I, and I think we, Megan and I, from the start, saw this as a way of, of encouraging people to engage with systems that may seem a little intimidating at first, particularly for younger people and trying to find ways to make them approachable, make them interesting, uh, and, uh, and enable those early conversations to start between parents and caregivers and siblings with uh, younger children so that they grow up being fascinated and wanting to be in, engaged with our voting process. That's wonderful. And for those of you who don't know Megan and Dan, they not only are co-authors, they are married. So I'm curious if, if you guys would like to comment on what is your process like for writing a, a book together? Well, with three kids, our biggest obstacle was finding the time to do it. So, um, you know, as parents, you know, you grab every nap time, every early bedtime that you can, every 10 minutes here. There were several times when we were working together in the summer where we would take the kids to the splash pad and have the laptop several feet away, you know, so we could keep an eye on them, but also be writing at the same time. So we truly just grabbed, um, just grabbed every minute that we could. Um, and somehow, <laughs> somehow they all got written. <laughs> Yeah, and really just taking it topic by topic, page by page here and there, you know, in the hours we could piece together here and there and, and trying to make it work. But it was it was it was really fun to see these come together. Uh, Megan, would you say over a period of, of, of a couple of months or what, what would you say is the timeline for that? Yes, it was it was interesting because there was a lot of overlap um, because as soon as we finished one manuscript, then the artist would start sketching. Um, and then preparing final art. So at any given time, we were reviewing all the books in various stages of development. So um, it was a pretty constant process, I'd say for about a year, though we probably had them all written within probably six to eight months. And we're, we're gonna be highlighting two of those books um, this evening, but how many total are there in the series? There are four books. We have My Vote, my president, my Congress, and my Supreme Court. Gosh, timely, timely is right. <laughs> All of those topics are so important to being Americans and living in this country. And that's just risen to the surface over the past couple of months for sure. So we're, we're thrilled to have you again. And how many, how many children do you have? Three. We have three kids. And then are, were they involved at all in the book drafting process? Do they provide any feedback? Oh, absolutely. Um, our kids are the best little editors. <laughs> they, uh, they do not mince words if something's not working. If the joke didn't hit, they will let you know. So I'm very, very fortunate to have a little focus group in my own house. Yes, we've got we've got some fans of, of Megan's and, and Dan's here. Um, Joan, I know you left a comment saying you're you're thrilled to be here and proud of Megan. Um, so I wanted to pass that message along as well. Um, okay, well, let's just dive in. I know you guys have some slides that you're going to share so we can see images along with the reading. We're going to start with my vote. Does that sound okay? Yes. My vote. Citizen Baby knows a thing or two about voting. Studying the issues is a great place to start. It's important to meet the candidates if you can. They love kissing babies. When there's a town hall, you have to show up, even if it's past your bedtime. 
candidates need to hear your voice. Don't forget to register to vote, then help your friends register too. Now it's time to get to work. The race is heating up and you're on a roll. Let's get out the vote. Phone calls to voters are almost as important as phone calls to grandma and grandpa. At last, election day is here. Don't let bad weather, long lines, or a busy schedule keep you away from the polls. It's your chance, your choice. Your vote. Plus, you get a sticker. After voting, you have to wait for the results. Waiting is never easy, but win or lose, you can be proud of doing your part. Citizen Baby knows that every election matters and every vote counts. Now let's do it all again. The end. That was wonderful. <laughs> Some hand claps from the Aaron Woods clan over there. <laughs> Good to see some little faces. <laughs> um, so what are some of the ways that, that you guys as parents have engaged your kids um, and getting them excited about elections like this one? Yep, okay, I'll go back to screen sharing and see. So we really ascribe to the um, belief that be a voter, raise a voter. Children um, learn what they live. So if this is important to us, we involve them in it so that they can um, experience all these parts of civic engagement too, so that they won't be unfamiliar to them when they are older. I know for me, I did not know much about voting growing up. I know that on election day, um, there would be voting happening in my elementary school, but it was a part of the school that was closed off to kids that day. So I didn't see what was happening and I didn't know what was happening. It was just very mysterious, vague process. And one thing that we think is really important is that kids have the opportunity to see it up close and in person so that when they are 18 and old enough to vote, they don't find anything intimidating. They know exactly what's going to happen. And there are really so many ways to get your family involved in civic engagement. One way that we love is canvassing together. Um, you know, kids love knocking on doors and ringing the doorbells and they can go with you door to door. That's a picture of my son um, hanging door knockers on people's uh, doors. And um, you can get together with some friends and their kids and just go into a neighborhood together and go every other house. It's so much fun to see kids running up and down a sidewalk with campaign information and information about a candidate and handing it out. Now, some of this, of course, is a little different now because of COVID, but I know at least in my city, there are socially distant ways to canvas where you're just dropping off materials. You're not knocking on the door and having those face-to-face -face conversations. So these things are so important, especially if you have the chance to do it for um, local candidates, like a candidate for city council who isn't um, getting as much airtime as say the presidential candidates or someone for the state Senate. This is where you can really make a big difference in the election. Um, you can go to rallies together. I think bringing kids to political rallies is really important. Let them hear firsthand what the candidates are saying. Let them see the excitement of the crowd around them and see that there's a lot of people that care about this. And then you can have conversations after them. Did you agree with everything the candidate said? Did you disagree with any of it? Did any of it seem like it wouldn't be something they would be able to do? So you can really, um, even with young kids, you can start to really engage in um, what, that, what that process of a campaign looks like. 
And of course, volunteering together is a big one and so much fun. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an active volunteer with Moms Rising, um, which is a nonpartisan group that um, really uh, advocates for issues that affect families and really all people in this country. And so as a result, um, on the right, there's a picture of my daughter and me as we were, um, we set up a station um, from Moms Rising to have materials to entertain kids while they waited in long lines at the polls with their parents. So it's called our super, sorry, our super voter treasure box. It's just lots of fun things for them to play with and do in line. And that's something that my kids then feel really active with. So a lot of times you'll find in your community, there's get out the vote rallies or parades or um, you know, fun days at polling stations. And that's what my son and I on the left were doing. We were helping to organize um, a get out the vote rally. And, and that's something where kids can feel so useful and right in the thick of all the excitement. You can poll greet together. And this one is such a big deal. This is so important. This is where you go and you um, are handing out literature for the candidates you believe in at the poll itself. And they'll have, there will be greeters there from um, both sides of the aisle. But what I have found is to have children involved in that just makes everything a, a friendlier experience. I have seen so many voters who look frazzled or worried or anxious start to come up. And when they see kids or a baby, they smile and they feel like more at ease. And it's also been a really great experience for me and my family when we poll greet to you know, start building relationship with the poll greeter from the other party. Um, you know, we live in such a polarized time. And at the, when we did this last in 2018, um, I had extra water bottles, the other poll greeter had extra chairs, and we were really just coming together as Americans participating in you know, the election. And it was a, it was a really uh, beautiful, powerful moment for my kids to see. We weren't enemies, we didn't agree on the issues, but we were helping each other out and engaging in the process. And so this is a great one to do with kids and there is always, always a need for poll greeters. And of course, most importantly, vote together. Take your kids with you to vote. Let them see how you check in. Let them come into the voting booth with you and you know, tell them about what you're doing. They can't fill out the ballot, but they can watch you mark it or touch the screen if you have electronic voting. Um, so this is such a, such a big one so that they can just get that experience and, and feel so comfortable with it throughout their childhood as they grow up and, and that comes um, you know, around every two years, every four years. It's, it's just a really special, important moment. And if there's any way that you can vote with your, with your kids and bring them with you, such an important thing. As you can see, we've, uh, we've been voting since our oldest was an itty bitty little baby. And it's just been such a, such a special, important time um, for us all. And then of course, um, election night is um, pretty much like a holiday in our house. We, um, we don't have bedtime. Everybody can stay up as late as they want. We, have, um, we get PJs on early. We have the sleeping bags and air mattresses down in the living room. The kids can watch the returns with us throughout the evening. Um, we have coloring and activity sheets of like, the United States that they can color the states red and blue as each state is called um, and lots of good snacks of course and we really just make it like a party and it's so much fun for them that way that then my kids have said like when's election night coming because they're so excited to stay up as late as they can um, and be part of that process so that's a picture of my little guy really excited about an election return and a picture of me with my daughter as we were staying up uh, way too late to uh, see who would have won. <laughs> oh, man, your children are adorable. Just <laughs> as an aside, so. totally unrelated to civic <laughs> duty. Um, and they look like each of you. Um, each you. <laughs> so cute. Um, and I just love the idea of making it special, making it something to look forward to. Um, it's not a, a drag or something you have to do. It's something to, to be excited about and um, to celebrate. So I 
thank you for sharing those ideas and for showing pictures too. I think it helps kind of make it real and make it seem possible for families with little children. So thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we did have another comment. Someone else commented that um, just a great model for other families who might have felt like they couldn't include their children or may not have, have thought of that before. And that's just a great, I, great I creative it. idea. Yeah, it's so many, um, in so many areas, we often leave kids out or we feel like it's inappropriate to bring kids, but I don't think there's anywhere um, more important for kids to be than to see how our democracy works on the ground in practice with people voting. And it really helps them um, be familiar with it and know what to expect when it's their turn. I think um, if you spring it on somebody when they're 18, oh, you can vote now, and they haven't been part of that process, it might just not, it might seem so distant and removed that it's not something they want to take the time um, to um, figure out how to register to vote and figure out all the, you know, do I need ID? Do I not need ID? When can I go? Do I have to go to a certain place? All of that. Um, if we, If you've been part of it so that enough of it is familiar to you, then those other things won't seem as much of a, um, an obstacle, I believe. Yeah, and I, you could probably tell from the pictures that Megan showed, and really Gabriel especially, just winning hearts and minds in, in, in those images. <laughs> um, but the, the way in which it, it takes on all the trappings of a holiday, right? I mean, you have decorations. I mean, we have family rituals, right, that we have developed around it. So there's an expectation, there's an anticipation. Uh, whenever those votes come around and they happen more often than we might realize right it, again as megan said if you're factoring in those local elections uh and that happened in odd years even you can really really get a routine going from from year to year even that just makes it all the more exciting for everyone to be able to participate and and get other folks excited about the process too yeah i think about um my background is in public health and child development and just learning the role that parents play in socializing, you know, we're socialized to get excited about July 4th and Christmas. So why not um, also kind of build that into election day as well. Um, so that's a really cool point that you guys have brought up. Thank you. Um, we uh, had someone comment, thank you for a great presentation. Looking forward to incorporating these ideas with my own kiddos. Wonderful. Inspiring. That's great. That's great. New exciting. ideas. Yes. And then also Joan uh, Martin commented that her mom took her into the voting booth with her to vote, first for Truman and then for Eisenhower. Um, and that uh, she said that she would always vote for the man and not the party, and it made a devoted lifetime voter out of film. So that's her own firsthand experience uh, going, being involved in voting from being a little kid and now it's part of who she is as an adult. Well, do we want to uh, transition to the next book? Yes, let's do that, that as well. Sure. All right, this is Citizen Baby, My President. Citizen Baby has been thinking a lot about the presidency. The president is one of the most important people in the world, just like mommy. Every four years, the people vote to choose the next president. When someone becomes president, there's a big party to celebrate. Citizen Baby loves big parties. Daddy says the president lives in a special house called the White House and flies around the globe in a special airplane called Air Force One. It's not all fun and games, though, Mommy says. The president has to make tough decisions sometimes. Citizen Baby knows what that's like. Every day, the president's schedule is packed with meetings, phone calls, speeches, and other important business. Citizen Baby can relate. The president isn't the only one who works late into the night. 
Mommy says that sometimes the president has to handle tricky negotiations. Citizen Baby does too. The president has to work with others to accomplish big goals. That's one of Citizen Baby's specialties. Why does the president work so hard? For the people, of course. No matter where they come from, what they look like, or who they voted for, the president serves them all. Citizen Baby understands what that's like. In some ways, Citizen Baby and the president are a lot alike. They both learn and grow on the job, and they both can become leaders who inspire the whole world. At the end of the day, though, presidents are people too. They eat, sleep, and have big dreams, just like Citizen Baby. Thank you, Dan. That's wonderful. I'm curious um, if folks have any questions. Um, and I'm wondering if, if we can invite people to unmute since there's not that many of us, or if you would like for folks to type in the chat if they have questions or comments. Either way is fine with us. OK. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Anyone else have um, questions or comments? Want to say hi from the neighbors. <laughs> Good to see you. Next door. All right. Way to go, citizen neighbors. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Sure. Um, where can uh, folks find your books uh, if they want are interested in purchasing them? Uh, they should be available through any bookseller. Um, if all, always, if you can order them from, you know, an independent bookseller, that really helps the bookstore in your neighborhood. If you would like signed copies, you can order them from Bookmarks, the bookstore in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Dan and I will be happy to sign the books for you. But of course, Target, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, they are available um, widely. Wonderful. Uh, Joan commented, I love the bit of hidden humor for the adults reading to their children, having the president's dilemma be between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, we, we had fun with some of those spreads and trying to figure out how we could arrange certain elements. And it, it's funny because I think, uh, Megan, you probably agree. I think in, in many cases, we, we, we sort of knew that the issues or the specific topics or actions we wanted to get out, you know, uh, preparing posters or, or, or trying to get out the vote uh, through canvassing, things like that. Uh, and then I remember for the president book, we had some specific ideas about, you know, things that a president does. And then the challenge was trying to figure out how we can put that into a relatable format for something that, that a baby or a small child would do, right? Such as fighting with the toys, which is one of our, one of our favorite spreads. Do you have other comments or questions, Joan? Oh, I just, I am in complete delight. Ever since this series was first announced, you know, I just have been waiting for it and looking for it. I wish I commented on one of the things I, I've been commenting, commenting, but one of them was, I wish I had some little kids to give them to. It's like I, right now, my life is such that there aren't any little kids for me. To, I would immediately love to give it to them and read it to them. But at any rate, they're wonderful. I'm so proud of you, Megan. I've known Megan since she was a little girl and I just am so pleased and proud. And this, all the things you guys do together, your family, you and your husband, I was just terrific. And this series, just what a culmination at this point. This is great. I'm loving it. Thank you so much, Joan. It's so good to see you. Just for um, hugs. Little, I know hugs. That's right. A little tie in is that um, Joan was my Girl Scout leader when I was a child. And now I am a Girl Scout leader. And as it turns out, in the, in the past, the Girl Scouts would um, volunteer at the polls to hold babies while mothers went in to vote. So it all comes full circle. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's very cool. 
And for those of you who aren't familiar with um, our organization, Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina, um, we've been around for 40 years. We're a statewide organization really focused on making prevention a priority in our state and making sure that local communities have the knowledge, skills, and, and support that they need to uh, prevent child abuse and neglect at the local level. So we were thrilled when Megan and Dan got back to us um, and offered to have this event as a part of our 5K as an organization. We not only have had to pivot because of COVID, this 5K is typically in person. So we kind of had to get creative with that and then also finding ways to uh, find meaningful content for folks when we all have a lot going on, including the election. And so this was a great opportunity um, to kind of provide new content that is family oriented and, and kids keeping kids in mind and really central to our, to our mission of sort of investing early um, so that we see downstream impacts. And so it was very much in line with our mission and we're thrilled to know you guys and Moms Rising is, is a close partner of ours as well. So that's how we got connected with Megan. That's great. Thank you so much for organizing this. This has been a real treat. Yes. Yeah. And, and I want to carry it. I'm here on the other coast. I'm on the West Coast. And it's wonderful to be able to have an event like this. It's amazing. Zoom has, I mean, the, the isolation has brought us Zoom. Otherwise, I would never have been able to go to one of your readings. I've thought about that over the years, you know. I know. Oh, okay. This is right. like, wow, yeah. I love it. It's really remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I want to say a special hello tonight to Erin and Connor. And I don't know if I saw Scarlett there, but if she's there, hello to her too. <laughs> and she was Karen. actually napping, but the boys got to listen to it. <laughs> we were excited. <laughs> love you. <laughs> All right, Anne, any closing thoughts? wanted to thank you all um, for joining us and thank you Megan and Dan. Thank you so much. Thank you this so much. Really, this is great fun for us. Thank you again. Wonderful. And it thank was, you for all you wonderful. do for thank you for all you do for our children and families. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Take yes, care. Everybody stay too. safe. Stay safe. Be take care. Bye bye.